I'm Davida Davini, and today we're exploring Istanbul, Turkey. Turkey lies in the southeastern part of Europe, bordering Bulgaria and Greece to the west. The largest city, Istanbul, is situated in the northwestern part of the country, nestled between the Black and Marmara Sea. It's the only city in the world that actually spans into two continents of Europe and Asia. Istanbul is surrounded by the sea with the Bosporus Strait dividing the Asian border and strategically positioned between the only sea route, leading from the Black Sea to the Mediterranean. The city local public transportation trams date back to 1872. Today, the faster modern tram line is able to carry 265,000 passengers per day. Heading east on the busy main avenue of Divan Yolu, there's a tomb of Sultan Mahmud II from 1840. Just a short distance further east starts the park which leads to all the main attractions that draws millions of the tourists to this city. The park got its name from the beloved Turkish literary poet. The Sultan Ahmed Square or Hippodrome is the historic center to the peace sites, starting with the gazebo-style German fountain from 1900, built in Germany and brought here to honor a German emperor's visit in 1898. A German inscription and the base was added to guide visitors. Hagia Sophia is located on top of a hill overlooking the Sea of Marmara, erected in 537 as the greatest church of the ancient world. A large sparkling fountain sits in front, while the mosque completes the background theme. This is the Church of the Holy Wisdom, or in Greek it's known as Hagia Sophia. It dates back to the 4th century but was rebuilt in 537. It currently serves as a museum with an entrance fee for admission. Directly across on the opposite side is another massive temple, which was built by Sultan Ahmed II to surpass Hagia Sophia. The Blue Mosque started back in 1610. It's located next to Hagia Sophia, with its six minarets. It's the first site to be seen by passing cruise ships. The Blue Mosque got its name from the blue tiles of the surrounding interior walls. Admission is free, but only when it's not been used for daily worship, which lasts for about half hour. There are three entrances with a spacious interior courtyard line with 26 columns and 30 small domes. The courtyard is used for rituals. Inside the mosque is lined with more than 20,000 handmade ceramic tiles and over 200 stained glass windows illuminate the grand architecture. It's required to remove your shoes before you enter and ladies are given a scarf to cover their heads. Back in the old days before the public announce system was installed, the prayer announcer had to climb in the minaret to make the announcement of the prayer session. Alongside the mosque in the Hippodrome stands the towering obelisk of Theodosius. The ancient Egyptian obelisk of Pharaoh Tutmos III was erected by the Roman Emperor back in the 4th century and has always been considered magical by the people. As we exit north of the park, then on the opposite side of the main street is the Basilica Cistern. The required entrance fee is worth the cost to experience this magical ancient underground reservoir. It was built in 6th century by the emperor and probably the largest one from the several hundred cisterns that lie beneath the city of Istanbul. 
They used 336 columns and some came from ruined temples to construct the underground water container. It was able to store 80,000 cubic meters of water. It was lost for many years and rediscovered in 1545. Two strange medusa heads are being used as column bases in the far left corner. I have walked along the main road, then through the part of the old city. Now continuing for two blocks northeast to reach Topkapi Palace. Topkapi Palace was the administration center for the Ottoman Empire from 1465 to 1853. The main street, Imperial Gate, from 1478 is covered in 19th century marble, opening into the first courtyard of the regiments. It's the largest and oldest palace in the world to survive to the present day and in 1924 it was converted into a museum, where it has become the greatest popular site to visit in Istanbul. Next I made my way down the hill on the old streets ending at Kennedy Avenue to explore the coastal sea pedestrian trail that followed the seawall. Here people come to stroll, watch the ships go by on the Sea of Marmara, and locals spend the day hoping to bring home a fresh catch of local fish. Istanbul has an ancient history dating back to 300,000 years. It was built on seven hills by the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. The six tower minarets are the first thing oncoming ships see from the distance as they approach the city. We return back on the main avenue of Divan Yulu. Then just a bit further west is an authentic Turkish tea house called Korlulu Ali Pasa Medresesi. It's a huge smoke house serving endless cups of tea in a 300 years old historic building. It's very close to the Grand Bazaar, which also closes early at 7 p.m., but in the adjacent alleys, shops stay open later. Seems they have endless supply of colorful fragrant spices, designer handbags, souvenirs, and a vast array of shawls, all type of clothes, from shorts to dresses, and Turkish craft and relics. There's also a currency exchange booth along the busy streets. The sidewalk cafes and restaurants offer Turkish and Mediterranean food that are very affordable and probably one of the biggest attractions of the country. From kebabs, donors, shawarmas to salad, it's a mosaic of many dishes with different flavor prepared daily to meet the local demand. Istanbul is an exciting destination to explore.